Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our week one Conference USA Game of the Week preview between the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and the Bowling Green Falcons. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with Tulsa. Now let's look at the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. When you look at Trey Watts, they have to let him eat this week. Here's a guy that can do a lot of damage in a running game as a receiver and also as a returner. You got to find ways to feed him the football very early versus Bowling Green. And when you look at the secondary, they have to be ready to compete. They have to be ready to play above the rim. When you look at guys like Marco Nelson, the free safety, he has to be able to control the middle of the field. We know Bowling Green has some big wide receivers and they will try to go up top. And they also lost a lot defensively, especially in the front seven. Can they recover from those losses? This was a very good defense last year. I know they played a lot of guys. They have some quality depth, but they need those guys to step up and be consistent from day one, especially versus a team like Bowling Green. Now let's move over to Bowling Green in this matchup. Quarterback Matt Chills must be more decisive with the football. If he can do that, this is a team that can make some noise in the Mid-American Conference this year. And on defense, they have to force Tulsa's quarterback Cody Green to throw into zones. I like the Falcons defensively. This is a team that's very stout, and I think they can have some opportunities to pick off passes. And that defense, again, they have to stay gap disciplined. We know about Trey Watts. We know about Jatarian Douglas. They can really make you pay if you get out of position defensively. The X factor for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, not only in this ball game, but throughout the course of the season, will be quarterback Cody Green. He has to become a more accurate passer. His ball placement has been all over the place. Last season, he completed over 54% of his passes. That has to improve 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, has to cut down on the turnovers and become a better decision maker with the football. The X factor for Bowling Green will be the running game. They were dealt a huge blow in the offseason with Anton Samuel, their leading rusher last season, leaving the football team. We don't know if he's going to come back, but they're left with guys like Andre Givens, Travis Green, Jamel Mart. They're going to have to carry the load this year for Bowling Green running the football. Now here's some coaching points for both teams in this matchup. For Tulsa, you want to force Matt Shields into quick decisions. Don't allow him to hold that football long and allow those receivers to get downfield. That's an advantage for Bowling Green. And running back Jatarian Douglas, here's a guy that's just as talented as Trey Watts. You got to find ways to get both guys involved early. Douglas can be a difference maker this week versus Bowling Green. And you want to gamble early on defense. Take chances, get out the shields, force him into some bad decisions, and that way you can have some success defensively. And for Bowling Green in this matchup, you want to shrink the ball game. You have an outstanding offensive line that can lean on that defensive front of Tulsa Run the football with those three backs in the backfield, go by committee, but you can shrink this ball game and you can have a chance to win. And you want to play above the rim. There are some big targets out there in Bowling Green and Sean Joplin, who's 6'2", 197 pounds, and Chris Gallion, a sophomore, that's 6'4", 220. Play above the rim. You have the height advantage on the flanks, and you want to win the special teams battle. Both teams, in my opinion, are very good on special teams. Tulsa has a return game. Bowling Green has both the return game as well as the kicking game, so they want to win that aspect of the game, giving themselves a great chance to come away victorious. Now here's some 2014 draft prospects you want to watch for in this ball game. A lot of talent on both sides of the ball for both teams. You look at Trey Watts, a multi-purpose type of a player, can do it as a runner, returner, and as a receiver. Sean Jackson, outstanding blitzing linebacker, but also holds his own well in coverage. And Kiaris Garrett, a junior prospect, 6'4", 210, was the leading receiver last year for Tulsa. And it also seems like Tulsa always churns out outstanding safety prospects. Marco Nelson is next in line, a six foot, 192 pound senior. Here's a guy that was a freshman All-American and has been a consensus All-Conference USA performer since he's been on campus. And as for Bowling Green, like I mentioned, this is a team that was very talented defensively and still has a lot of talent on that side of the ball. Gabe Martin is an outstanding coverage linebacker, a junior prospect. When you look in the secondary, Boo Boo Gates is a guy that's an outstanding safety, but also is a talented returner. Cameron Trust holds his own on the edges. And Brian Smeedybush is an outstanding punter. 24 out of 72 punts last year landed inside the 20. Steve Larger was a consensus All-American for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in the mid-70s. Here's a guy that racked up 28 touchdowns and over 1,800 yards in two seasons playing the wideout position. Doit Perry is the greatest coach in Bowling Green history. Here's a guy that compiled a 77-11 and 11 overall record, two undefeated seasons, went 46-8 and eight in the MAC, 
capturing five MAC titles. And there's a reason why the stadium today bears his name. I like Tulsa in this matchup. The Golden Hurricane are an explosive offense, and they have been very stout defensively throughout the course of the years. And though the Falcons are tough defensively, I don't trust Shields right now at the quarterback position to move the football consistently versus a team that loves to get after the quarterback. 